Bordering the Pacific Ocean on the Emerald Isle Kodiak lies one of America's premier launch facilities, the Kodiak Launch Complex. Launch vehicle is go for launch. T minus 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5. As the nation's first commercial spaceport, located on a non-federal range, the Kodiak Launch Complex is located about 44 road miles south of the city of Kodiak. KLC has a 100% success rate and is the only launch-on-demand spaceport in the United States. The Kodiak Launch Complex can claim the prize location for launching polar orbiting missions. You want to launch out of Kodiak for several reasons. One of the biggest things is our large uh, downrange azimuth from 110 degrees to 220. Uh, you won't find that at any other launch complex in the United States. The other thing you want to come to Kodiak for is our launch availability. We don't have a jam-packed schedule with multiple customers competing for launch spaces and launch services. And the next mission for KLC, the STP-S26 multi-payload mission. We're here at the Payload Processing Facility at the Kodiak Launch Complex. The team at the Space Development and Test Wing out of Kirtland Air Force Base, New Mexico, is preparing to launch the STP-S26 multi-payload mission into orbit. Let's check it out. The Department of Defense Space Test Program is responsible for research, development, test, and evaluation missions. STP uses a wide variety of platforms to host space research and development experiments. Our Space Development Test Wing is actually commanding and controlling from our R&D Operations Center out in Kirtland the spacecraft that we're launching. So we really have a phenomenally broad uh, scope for this mission, the launch vehicle, the spacecraft, the integration, the range, and the command and control of the spacecraft that we're putting in orbit. It, it, it's really incredible. STP-S26 will fly 16 experiments on seven different satellites. So it's a very complex mission. It's the most complex mission we've had in over 20 years in the space test program. This is uh, Falcon Sat 5. We've got a plasma source up top. We've got um, our solar panels on all, all four sides, sun sensors all four sides. We've got some deployable antennas down on the bottom. It's going to do some plasma experiments. It's a very good tool to teach the cadets space by doing space. I'm going to hand this to you guys. They get to be a part of the design process and the build process. And as, as you can see, they're here now to help put it on the rocket and launch it. It's uh, providing great officers. They get real world experience, real engineering experience. They come out of here with great project experience. It's, it's really good for the Air Force and the country. The Space Test Program, or STP mission, is designated S-26 to correspond to the 26th small launch vehicle mission in its 40-year history flying Department of Defense space experiments. STP SAT 2 is actually the first in the Air Force's product line for the STP SIV product, which is the Space Test Program Standard Interface Vehicle. Uh, we're really excited to be here for the, for the first one, uh, as this was develop a standard bus for the Air Force to rapidly accommodate various Department of Defense payloads. Go STP! All Aerospace has been very excited to work with the Air Force. This is the culmination of uh, many years of effort to work through top-level requirements and refine them to come up with an enveloping bus uh, that will handle a variety of payloads. We can build these buses and test them and accommodate payloads very late in the game. Experiments that have a high potential for providing a new warfighting capability or enhancing an existing capability compete for approval and eventually spaceflight through the space test program. One of the great things about this launch is that it is so centered around these experimental payloads. 
oftentimes we'll have to squeeze on to a launch with some big major mission and we'll get stuck in the corner. But this launch actually has us right there on top, four nanosat scale satellites all next to each other and we're all the same level of mission. You, know, you can only fit so much on a rocket and then uh, so you start having to think of new ways of, of uh, going about getting satellites and different other kind of payloads in space. So we have these partnerships already, so to be able to work in this room together with them, there's a sense of camaraderie there that you don't get a lot at other launches. It's been excellent working with the mission folks at S26 and, and the Kodiak facilities are, are tremendous. Uh, with the shuttle program going away, it was uh, an, uh, an initiative started by NASA back in 2007 to create this as an alternative, a way to get uh, payloads up there get science uh, while the, the scientists or even students are still around and so being able to do it in you know one year to, to 18 months depending on the mission uh, it's going to really increase the opportunities for those payloads. On that satellite there are three experiments that were developed by the Naval Academy so you have a na three Naval Academy experiments going up on a satellite built by NASA that's going to be launched on a rocket by the Air Force all under the guise of the DoD Space Test Program. Like bringing the product to the customer, to the launch site, is about as exciting as it gets. Well, our missions are actually designed to be very quick turnaround, so on the order of a year or two, because a launch opportunity comes up and they usually approach us at NASA and say, hey NASA, what can you put on the rocket within the next year or so and accomplish? And we go, okay, well we have a number of principal investigators that want to carry out these sorts of experiments and we built the satellite to meet their requirements. Not only will this program shorten the time it takes to build and launch a satellite, it's a cost-effective way to evaluate early operational capabilities. Finding inexpensive ways to take a sensor, a spacecraft component, other technologies, get it on orbit and test it out before it actually goes into an operational system saves the Air Force and the entire DOD a tremendous amount of dollars. We eliminate that risk. And this satellite is based on the premise of doing space science in orbit on the cheap. With CubeSats, they're secondary payloads on rockets, so we generally piggyback on a launch that's already going up, and so launch costs for us are uh, relatively low. And the CubeSat goes into the P-Pod, which is just the deployer. What the P-Pod is, is basically just a spring-actuated deployer. All it does is uh, open a door and pushes the CubeSat out. And that is what's affixed to the launch vehicle. This program and the research labs, the Air Force Research Labs in general, are a great opportunity for young officers to really work with people in industry to get their hands on hardware and um, the Air Force has given me some amazing opportunities in order to be doing this program. I same feeling today. When everything is done, um, we're going to be very relieved to be made it to the top of our launch vehicle here. And it's, it's just a very gratifying experience to be here and to be able to do this. As the sun rises here at KLC, we begin another day at the payload processing facility as the final two satellites are mated on the rocket of choice. The STP-S26 mission will be flying on a Minotaur 4 rocket contracted by Orbital Sciences Corporation. The Minotaur 4 is actually a really neat rocket because we use decommissioned peacekeeper booster stages. We're a government launch vehicle and so because we get our stages from just GFE where our costs are fairly low compared to comparable rockets. We're also a solid rocket which um, gives you the benefit of uh, low infrastructure when you go to different ranges. It's a very good application for all these little university satellites. We can put all of them on one rocket and, and launch them rather than them waiting around for a very expensive payload to launch. To put it frankly, we know this rocket. This Minotaur IV is based on the Peacekeeper Intercontinental Ballistic Missile System, which is a fantastic system. It gives us the thrust and the size we need to put medium-sized satellites into space. Peacekeeper is a beautiful, beautiful rocket for one, and the fact that they took a retired ICBM from Cold War era and were able to reuse it and they're now reusing it for a satellite experimental packages and such. Rather than getting rid of them, rather than just uh, demilling them and saying goodbye to them, it's just absolutely wonderful. And uh, seeing Cold War era type stuff uh, reused in, in this way, especially in support of warfighters, is just beautiful. I think it is awesome working on, on something like this. And you, you finally see how many people it really takes to, uh, to do you know, rocket science. We're watching payload encapsulation. The payloads are already mated 
and Orbital is pulling the two fairing halves together so we can get everything ready, move down to the launch site, and do the final stacking. And this will be the first Mantar 4 launch out of Kodiak. This is the first time everyone is here at this site uh, doing these operations, all working together for a Mantar 4 launch from Kodiak Launch Complex. The heart of the complex, the Launch Control Center, is mission control during launch. This is the hub of the day of launch. So everyone will be sitting in this room on console, watching their respective feeds, counting down to the exciting moment of launch, and then watching everything through the plus count as we separate all of our satellites and make sure we have had a successful mission. Dating back to 1965, the Space Test Program has provided access to space, flying science and technology payloads fundamental to DOD's approach to space acquisition. Military capabilities, such as GPS, can trace its development back to earlier Space Test Program missions. To think that these experiments that we're flying on S-26 could someday be game-changing capabilities for the warfighter, I couldn't be more proud. My position, this job, is truly one of the best jobs in the Air Force. Sometimes it can be difficult to look at a piece of hardware that's going into space and, and understand how it helps the warfighter. But when we step back and we look at what is it really doing, even some of these experiments will have uh, tangible benefits to the warfighter right away. I've been really proud to be a part of this mission and certainly to be a part of the Space Development Test Wing. It's a special opportunity to serve as the mission director on this really historic mission where we all know how critically dependent our nation is on space systems. And those systems on orbit today didn't get there by accident. They got there by the advancement of technologies. Today we're going to have a chance to do that exact same thing for the next generation warrior to give them the edge that they need for space capabilities.